everybody welcome back to another episode of shifty's 49ers talk in this video it's going to be a massive free agency preview of course for the san francisco 49ers the legal tampering period in the nfl begins tomorrow march 13th at 4 p.m eastern time 1 p.m pacific time now in this video how it's going to be structured is we're just going to go position by position of course we'll talk about some of the players that we already have on the roster and then we'll talk about possible free agents to bring in whether it's to improve the roster or just really to fill out in terms of depth pieces to really supplement our starters now this is going to be a pretty informal video and it's going to be pretty long so whether you're on your commute or running errands or whatever you're doing to pass the time just feel free to listen in and of course leave your thoughts in the comments below during the video after the video I want to hear your thoughts because there is going to be a lot to talk about in the coming days with free agency kicking off but with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. Alrighty, folks, let's kick it off with the quarterback position. And under contract so far for the 2023 season, we, of course, have Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy did just undergo uh, surgery on his UCL tear. And by all accounts, we got the best news possible that it was a successful surgery. He should be back able to throw in about three months and essentially clear in about six months, which would put him right there at the beginning of the season. Now, just my opinion, and I'm just kind of taking a bit of a guess here I do think Brock Purdy will start the season on IR I just don't see any way the 49ers could potentially rush him into action with that also being said so he'll miss six games but with that also being said I think that Trey Lance regardless would be the starter week one I think he you know of course last offseason the Niners went all in on Trey Lance announcing him as the starter basically the franchise guy Brock Purdy not being able to really do much of anything in the entire offseason Trey Lance, of course, would have a major advantage there. And I think he is the starter come week one, is Trey Lance, and also should be the starter. Now, with all that being said, I do want to say that the Niners have to bring in at least a relatively good backup quarterback. If last season taught us anything, it's that you have to have depth at the most important position not only in football, but arguably in professional sports. So with that being said, let's get into some of the candidates I think the 49ers could bring in. Now, the first guy that I'm going to look at is a guy like Taylor Heineke. Um, I've mentioned him in a recent video that I put regarding a free agency video for targets for the 49ers. I think he'd be a great fit. He's someone who's been around the league for a long time. He's been relatively effective in recent years, just looking back to last year in particular with the Washington Commanders. Someone has some mobility. He's able to make big throws big plays and he really you know knows like what his role would be on the team uh what i mentioned in that video is that when the commanders traded for carson wentz heineke was basically saying Look, i'm the backup guy and sure enough he did get opportunities to play last season and i think he did a pretty good job so should anything happen to trey lance and i certainly hope it doesn't i'm knocking on wood um should Brock Purdy's maybe recovery be a little bit delayed, I do think that a guy like Heineke could come in, play a number of games, and with all the weapons that we have and the coaching that we have, I think we could still beat teams, maybe not the elite teams, but I still think we could beat probably, you know, at least most of the teams, I think, in the NFL. That's how good this 49ers roster is. Uh, the next guy that I want to talk about is actually going to be Sam Darnold. Now, he's been in the league for a while. It seems like he's been around for a while. He's only 26 years old. Um, of course, it was a complete disaster with the Jets and Adam Gase over there. He's had some terrible coaching. He's been in some terrible situations. And he's still a young guy. And he had, of course, a lot of promise coming out of college. By all means, you know, he's statistically, I think he's been okay-ish. Um, of course, nowhere near living up to being a top three pick. But I do like Sam Darnold in terms of, as a backup guy, um, I think that's really what his role is going to be in the NFL going forward. Um, just having seen what he's done in Carolina, it's definitely a huge improvement, I think, over what he did with the Jets. Um, he also has some mobility. You know, accuracy is not a huge thing, but he's not afraid to throw the ball down the field, which you like. And um, I think he'd be a good fit as a backup for the 49ers. Now, with the other guys here, I'm going to go through these a little bit more quickly. But Andy Dalton is an option. I think he played reasonably well with the New Orleans Saints last season. With the 49ers, again, coming into a really good coaching and so many weapons around him, I think he could be an option who would be 
be able to get the team through a number of games if he has to play. Um, Another guy who I really like too is going to be Teddy Bridgewater. Again, strictly as a backup, and then once Purdy is back would be QB3. I think these guys are all really solid options. Again, these guys could come in, and I think they would do a whole heck of a lot better than what we saw from... Uh, than what we saw from Josh Johnson in the NFC Championship game. Now, two other names that typically get thrown out, we have Jacoby Brissett and Marcus Mariota. I think that these guys are going to go to teams where they're going to have a legitimate shot to be the starter. That's something that they're not going to have in San Francisco. Now, if I had to make a prediction, um, we don't really know what's going to happen with Matthew Stafford in LA. So I think Mariota could go to LA. I think he'd be a pretty solid fit there with Sean McVay. Still a guy who's not, you know, has maybe a few years in him. I think LA could maybe look to the middle rounds to draft a quarterback, or maybe they're just looking at 2024 to draft a quarterback. Then you have Jacoby Brissett. Maybe he goes somewhere like the Houston Texans, for example. That could be an option to throw out there for a guy like Jacoby Brissett to get some snaps. Maybe even Arizona, too, depending on how Kyler Murray's, you know, recovery from his ACL tear is going. He could get some meaningful snaps there. But uh, that's going to do it for the quarterback position, guys. Coming up next is going to be the running backs. Just before we hop into the running backs with the quarterback position, let me say that I do think that we could potentially draft a quarterback probably in the seventh round, similar to last year, or of course, I would imagine us picking up an undrafted free agent quarterback. I think a guy like a Stetson Bennett, maybe a Max Duggan, um, you know, there's a lot of different options out there, a quarterback in the later rounds of the draft, but ideally someone who's played a lot of college ball could be an option. Uh, probably won't make the 53-man roster eventually once Purdy is back, but I think he's a guy who could help us get through training camp, preseason, could be on the practice squad, and who knows what happens when you draft a quarterback late. We saw it last year, but uh, let's now move on to the running back and fullback position. Spoiler alert for the fullback position, no one to really talk about. Kyle Juszczyk is here, and maybe we pick up an undrafted free agent for the fullback position. And really for the running back position, there isn't much to talk about because I think, look, you see what we have already. Christian McCaffrey, you look at him, of course, we know how great he is. Elijah Mitchell. Now, Elijah Mitchell is a great player when he's on the field, but he certainly misses time. Then you have, it's going to be the second year man, Jordan Mason, undrafted free agent out of Georgia Tech. I thought he looked really, really good in limited carries. And then round out with our third round pick from last year, TDP, Tyrion Davis Price. He looked okay in limited snaps, but you have four very solid running backs who can contribute. And of course, guys like McCaffrey are elite. And I think Mitchell has a chance to be near that level. He played really well in his rookie year. Um, if I had to guess what the 49ers do here is I think hopefully not spending another third round pick on a running back, but uh, maybe similar to the quarterback. Maybe you look at a late round running back uh, in the draft, like a uh, Tavian Thomas out of Utah. You know, I think that could be a potentially good fit. Uh, Muhammad Abraham from uh, Minnesota. But if we had to kind of focus more on free agents, honestly, I would look to bring back a familiar face. And it's going to be almost like the Dante Johnson of the offense, what seems like. But it's going to be Tevin Coleman. Um, he still looked like he had pretty darn good pace last year. Made a couple of big plays, especially against Carolina last year. But I like Tevin Coleman. I think he's a good locker room guy. Of course, knows the offense inside out. So if we were to bring in a free agent, could be Tevin Coleman. But I do think we'll probably go the younger route the um the late in the draft or an undrafted free agent all righty let's move on to the wide receiver position and this is really a position where you're not going to see the 49ers invest heavily in the offseason whether it's in free agency or the draft this year of course on the roster Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, we did sign Jawan Jennings to a one-year deal. We still have Ray Ray McLeod, and we also have last year's rookie, Danny Gray. Now, if I had to see what the 49ers might do free agency-wise at wide receiver, it could potentially bring back a guy like Willie Sneed or something strictly for depth. But even that, I think, is quite unlikely. I think the Niners might target a wide receiver in the draft, maybe in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Jonathan Mingo is a the guy they uh, had an interview with at the Combine. We do also have a couple of other younger receivers on the roster that I didn't mention, looking at Tyron Johnson, Daz Newsome, and then you have Tay Martin. So I just don't think the wide receiver position, you're going to see much of anything happen there in this offseason, unless there's a crazy trade, and I really hope not, because I really, really like this wide receiver group. 
Up next, let's talk about the tight end position. And of course, we have the man himself, George Kittle, all pro, pro bowl guy, arguably the best tight end in the game. But something that I think the 49ers have really tried to do is to get him a solid running mate, a tight end. I think that Shanahan would really love to explore having two tight end sets a little bit more often and maybe being able to give guys like Juszczyk a little bit more of a rest. But I think the two tight end sets is something that we've seen a relatively decent amount uh, last season and with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. But I like to think that he really wants to be able to exploit defenses because if we look at defenses, especially linebackers, you know, these guys are getting a lot smaller. Linebackers are 220 pounds. So if you can have a couple of really effective 6'4", 6'5", 240, 250 pound tight ends out there, that creates obvious mismatches and shut Kyle Shanahan, of course, would love to make the most of that. So on the roster, yes, we have George the Animal Kittle. Then we have Charlie Werner. Charlie Werner, you know, a decent blocker, um, not a great catcher of the football, which we saw especially in the Atlanta game last year. But let's look at some free agent possibilities that we could bring in. Now, I think this is definitely a position which we're going to focus on in the draft, maybe in the third round. I wouldn't be surprised if we use one of our three picks on a tight end. But for this video, let's focus on some free agents. So first guy we could talk about is potentially bringing back Tyler Croft. Now, Tyler Croft, of course, gets a lot of hate from the 49er fan base for essentially missing the block on Hassan Reddick that led to Brock Purdy's injury in the NFC Championship game and I think that hate is I don't know if it's like warranted but of course I can we're all frustrated what happened with that play but overall I think he's a solid option but I do think we could do better and how can we do better well to me a couple of options stick out and that's going to be Austin Hooper he was drafted back in 2016 by the Atlanta Falcons. Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator back then. The Niners were rumored to be interested back in 2020 when he was a free agent after his four years in Atlanta. And now I think it would be a really good opportunity for Hooper to come to San Francisco. Um, he wouldn't be anywhere near the focal point of opposing defenses. So I think he could come in and really just have a lot of success with San Francisco. Um, although he's not going to see maybe the volume of targets that he might get in another uh, areas or another teams. But I think it would be a great situation for him. He gets to reunite with Kyle Shanahan, although it's been quite a while. Um, and also, he gets to go to a team that's going to be really competitive. He's been, you know, in Cleveland. He's been in Atlanta. Of course, his rookie year, they went to the Super Bowl. We know what happened there. But after that, Atlanta really tailed off. Dan Quinn ended up getting fired uh, with, you know, Cleveland. They did have one year where I believe they went to the playoffs. Tennessee, his one year there was not great at all. So I think coming to a really good team, with some familiarity plus he went to stanford so of course very close to there um john lynch may be able to kind of be like hey stanford alumni let's go but i think he not only that but i think he'd be a great fit really good catcher of the football um blocking is solid um maybe not spectacular but very few tight ends are and uh one thing which i really love about austin hooper as well is that he just doesn't miss games if you look back to years and years and years he's been so consistent playing so many games and that's something that the 49ers really need going into a year where the nfc is really open it's for the taking so i think really kind of going I don't even think a move like this is going all in, but really kind of investing in this year without sacrificing the future. On a one-year deal, Austin Hooper, I don't see why not. Now, some other options that we could look at, O.J. Howard, former first-round pick, been kind of a bust with Tampa Bay. Then he went to Buffalo last season with Houston. Um, an intriguing option. I think that uh, if it's like an all-else fails, he could be someone worth bringing in for training camp and preseason, and let's see what happens. Um Although he has been a relative bust, you would have to say. Next guy is going to be Hayden Hurst. I think he really found a good home in Cincinnati last season. Another first-round pick. He was a first-round pick for the Baltimore Ravens a number of years ago. But I think Hayden Hurst, I, my guess is that he re-signs with the Bengals. You know, the Bengals, they have those great receivers. But Hayden Hurst, from any Bengal game I watched last year, just seemed to be a really reliable target for Joe Burrow. So I don't see why they wouldn't bring him back. The last guy here is going to be pretty interesting, and that's going to be Jordan Akins. He was with the Houston Texans last year, and we know that they didn't have really anybody at quarterback. He still put up almost 500 yards, five touchdowns. He's 31 years old, so although 
he may command a reasonable contract at that age i don't think he's going to be breaking the bank anywhere but that is another intriguing option for me among these guys my money would be on austin hooper but we'll have to see how it plays out and then uh, coming up next guys we are going to go over the offensive line and this is going to be a really fun one Alrighty, so we are going to kick it off with the offensive tackle position. Now, for the 49ers, who do we have under contract for next year? Well, of course, we have the big man himself, Trent Williams, best tackle in the game. There was a slight speculation that he was thinking about retiring, but he quickly squashed that. And he actually mentioned, you know, basically fulfilling his contract. Now, I think Trent Williams, to me, what I would expect is he plays this coming season. And assuming, you know, relatively healthy, the 49ers have success, I would expect him to play in 2024. Beyond that, though, we don't really know. Um, but I think it's still a little bit maybe early to say that we have to get the successor at left tackle uh, for Trent Williams. So uh, the other big news, of course, recently was we re-signed Colton McKivitz to a two-year deal, uh, just under $6 million. I think that's a really reasonable price. At that price, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see how training camp and everything goes, but that's a really good price, I think, for a very, very solid swing tackle with potential starting ability, which I think Colton McKivitz has. Um, he hasn't played a ton of snaps, but I think whenever he's been out there, I feel like he's done a solid job. Now, the other tackle that we have has been Jalen Moore. Now, he's been really up and down. Uh, if we look back to the 2022 season, last season, week three against the Denver Broncos, he was a complete disaster. That was not good at all when Trent Williams went out hurt on that Jimmy Garoppolo safety. God, what a tragic play that was. But uh, I think Jalen Moore, then once he played a little bit more, um, he did get kind of find himself, and I think that he is another solid option to tackle. Now, the big question, of course, is for 49ers is, look, we had three quarterbacks, four quarterbacks get hurt last season. So the Niners, you have to say, kind of have to invest in their offensive line. So who are some of the options out there at right tackle? Because we know left tackles penciled in for the 49ers. Well, of course, we could always look to bring back Mike McGlinchey. Now, it sounds like that's not going to happen. Uh, by all accounts, you know, just how everyone said in like the media, McGlinchey and then Lynch and whatnot, that it sounds like he's kind of as good as gone. Uh, media reports saying that he's going to get a contract very quickly. A lot of speculation about Chicago. You know, he went to Notre Dame. I think he's from Indiana. I could be wrong about that. So very close to Chicago, close to family. They have a ton of money. They need, they have a major need at right tackle. So that all makes a lot of sense. Now, one of the other guys who gets talked about a lot is Caleb McGarry uh, from the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I do think he'd be a really good fit with the 49ers. Great run blocker. Pass protection is hit or miss. You know, to me, that kind of sounds a whole lot like Mike McGlinchey. So I think although Caleb McGarry might be a slight upgrade over McGlinchey, um, if he's going to cost more, maybe. I just don't know if it would be worth it. I don't know if it's any kind of significant upgrade. And then at that point, if you're going to pay big money to either of these guys, maybe it's worth it to pay it for a guy like McGlinchey, who already knows the system inside out. He knows everything about the franchise, the organization, the teammates, the chemistries there. So I, why not just bring back McGlinchey at that point? Now, what I think could happen is maybe the 49ers go for a more affordable veteran route at right tackle so um, you could look at two guys who come to mind is going to be Andrew Wiley right tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs um, of course he's been on two Super Bowl winning teams there in Kansas City one of the more unheralded guys I would say on the Chiefs offensive line of course Creed Humphrey who's amazing at center he gets a lot of credit and then you have Orlando Brown very recently again great player should get all the should get a lot of credit um, but I think Andrew Wiley's been very solid in Kansas City and is not going to maybe demand as much money as a guy like McGlinchey so that's an option and then you have maybe a cheaper option albeit a little bit older would be a guy like Billy Turner uh, Billy Turner probably had some of his better years you could argue with Green Bay when they went to back to back to back I think NFC championship games so you know he's played in some big games and he's you know the Matt LaFleur Kyle Shanahan systems not too dissimilar so I think that could be a really solid option there it's going to be really intriguing to see how the 49ers look at the tackle position because of course in the draft you have a number of guys who could be options too you look in the third round you know there's guys like uh, Blake Freeland who's really solid later in the draft you have a uh, is it Nick uh, Salvaderi I think there's a lot of other options in the draft at tackle the question I think is going to be 
And this will say a lot about how the 49ers feel about a guy like Colton McKivitz. If we think back to last year, we were talking about, well, I was talking about, we got to bring in maybe, bring back Jaquaski Tard, bring, bring in a safety. But they were like, no, Hufanga. And Hufanga had an all-pro year. Then you also look at, you know, Alex Mack retires at center. We're all thinking they got to draft a center you know, as early as possible. They don't do that. Jake Brendel plays, and he plays pretty solid. So um, the 49ers do, of course, have a lot of faith in their own development um, of whether it's draft picks or just bringing in the right veterans to play key roles. Um, but it will be interesting to see how the 49ers tackle this. No pun intended. We're talking about right tackles, but... I, yeah, I'm not really sure how it's going to go. My guess would be maybe going for a guy like a Billy Turner just so there is that experience. I think that what they would do is basically give, like, or they would have McKivitz kind of slotted in as the starting right tackle, see how he does. If he struggles, then you have a really good veteran, Billy Turner, or else you can always compete with a guy like Jalen Moore. But I don't necessarily think we're going to break the bank here at right tackle. So I wouldn't expect that if I was a 49er fan. Now, coming up next, guys, we're going to talk about the uh, guard position and the center position. We are now going to move on and in this segment talk about offensive guard and center. Now with the offensive guard positions, we have both of our starters locked up. Left guard, you got Aaron Banks. Right guard, you got Spencer Burford. Both of these guys played the vast majority of the snaps, Banks in particular. Burford played about 60-70% of the snaps at right guard. He did rotate with Daniel Brunskill a little bit, but these guys essentially played in 19-20 games and of course three preseason games. So. Although they've really only been starters for a year, they did get a ton of experience, which is awesome to see. So really, the focus here when it comes to the guard position is just getting quality depth. Now, the first option there is going to be, I think you would just bring back Daniel Brunskill. And I really would not mind that option, depending on the money involved. Brunskill, we know he can play essentially almost any position on the offensive line. He's, of course, very familiar with the coaching staff, with the scheme, you know, how things are done here with the players. And for me, the offensive line, that's such a massive thing. It's just having continuity, having consistency on the offensive line, I think really lends to some of the better offensive line play that you see in the NFL. So I think Brunskill is a realistic option, again, if the money is realistic, and it would also depend on Daniel Brunskill's expectations. Does he want to go somewhere and absolutely be a starter, or is he happy being a primary backup for almost any position on the offensive line? And the likelihood is that he would see snaps at some point throughout the season. Now, if we were to look at some other options who are out there in free agency, one of the guys that maybe stands out, and the guys who I'd be looking for would be veteran guys who've been around the league for a while, you know, maybe not starter material, um, but guys who could come in, do a solid job, fill the role that they need to fill, um, and of course, you know, just really solidify things. You don't necessarily want to have to rely on a rookie to come in and then all of a sudden your offensive line is in shambles. So some names that stick out to me, Greg Van Roten, previously played with the Jets, last season with the Buffalo Bills. You know, he's 32 years old, I believe, decent fit, I think, for the offense. Um, he played with the Jets, Mike LaFleur, of course, coming from that Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. So that's really good. I think he'd be a solid fit there. And I think just the money involved would be very reasonable. Then you have Trey Turner. You have Max Garcia, Trey Turner of the Commanders, Max Garcia of the Cardinals. Again, guys who maybe wouldn't be expecting to be starters right off the bat. But should anything happen to Banks or Burford, I think could come in and do a really solid job. Now, the other thing to talk about is in the draft, the Niners and just Kyle Shanahan generally, they typically wouldn't use high draft picks or draft capital on guards. Now, of course, we did draft Aaron Banks in the second round uh, a couple of years ago, but I think we'd more go the route if we were to draft someone and not pick up a veteran free agent. You could look at maybe, you know, sixth, seventh round undrafted free agent guys. Um, and then, of course, you have guys like Nick Sakel on the roster, Jason Poe, who I think have been practicing a little bit more for center, but I think could move to the guard position if pressed into duty. But I think the bigger position to talk about here is going to, of course, going to be center. Now, Kyle Shanahan, I think, definitely puts typically at least, would put a pretty significant emphasis on the center position. One of the first moves the 49ers made when Kyle Shanahan was hired was bringing in Weston Richburg. Once Weston Richburg retired because of the injuries, then we brought in straight away. It was like, oh, Alex Mack, he was here for a year. Then he retires kind of suddenly, although I think the Niners had an idea that it was going to happen. 
Um, then Brendel. Brendel comes in, a relative unknown, and I thought he played pretty well. Early on, a number of struggles, but that's to be expected. Because if you look at the 49ers' interior offensive line starting the 2022 season, you have Banks, Brendel, and Burford. Burford, a rookie. Banks didn't play at all his rookie, or maybe a handful of snaps. Brendel, although he was in the league for a number of years, didn't really play much regular season football at all. So putting three guys together who really haven't played much NFL real regular season football, there was going to be growing pains. And I think the offensive line did get better as the year went on. And to me, I mentioned it in the guard, you know, when we're talking about the guards, but just having that continuity, having that consistency is massive. And I think bringing back Brendel is maybe the best option. Now, should the 49ers say, look, we had four quarterbacks get hurt last season. We need to invest heavily in this offensive line. Let's invest some real money into the offensive line at all, you know, at these positions. Who could the 49ers go for who would be a potential upgrade? So looking at Garrett Bradbury, I think, you know, he fits the athletic profile. Former first round pick of the Vikings. His rookie year was not good at all. But the last, you know, three seasons definitely improved. And you'll like what you see again from that athletic profile fits what Shanahan likes to do. Ethan Posick was with the Seahawks last season with the Browns. Very physical guy. You love that. We love to run the football. And we've been running the football basically between the tackles a lot more. So you love to see that physicality from a guy like Posick. And I think he'd be a great fit next to a guy like Aaron Banks and Trent Williams. That could be nasty running on the left side of the line. Bradley Bozeman's another guy to talk about, formerly of the Ravens and with the Panthers last year. Connor McGovern with the Jets. I'm not a huge fan of McGovern. I think he's a little bit on the older side. He's 30, 31. He's going to cost a lot of money. Um, ben Jones was actually just released by the Tennessee Titans. Like Ben Jones, I think he would come in and be like a solid stabilizing guy. But number one, he's 34, 35. He won't be around. He'll be around for a year. And then we're kind of going through this again. Or does he fit the athletic profile that Shanahan would want? But finally, something that really just kind of came across the news very recently was from the Indianapolis Colts, Ryan Kelly, their starting center, available via trade, possibly getting released. I mean, if it came down to it, I'm not, he does have a relatively big contract hit. Maybe that could be restructured or reworked or something like that. Um, but I think if we could throw, I'm not going to throw like a third round pick for Ryan Kelly, but maybe you throw a sixth round comp pick and a sixth round pick next year or something like that um, that could be worth looking into maybe a seventh round pick because if he's going to be released anyways you know but it might be worth securing that guy but I think Ryan Kelly could be an option then of course you have what would be options available in the draft now the draft there's really a lot of interesting guys the guy who I'd look kind of most for is going to be you know Luke Whipler um, I think some of like the top couple of guys are just going to be out of reach unless we want to start trading future second round picks and third round picks which I don't know if we want to go that route I mean what I would do is let's say if it's middle of the early to middle of the third round I would say our pick overall 99 and maybe next year's third round pick to secure a guy like Whipler I would do that in a heartbeat um if we haven't addressed it in free agency on the roster right now we have Nick Sakel, Jason Poe um Unless Shanahan has some real confidence in one of those guys, I can't see us going into next season with those. I want to say, to me, Shanahan maybe would prefer the veteran guy you know, who's been there, done that, can make the play calls, can make the reads of the defense pre-snap and really help out the quarterback. So uh, my guess would be we go Jake Brendel. If we want to really go for a splash move in free agency or trade, I think we either go Garrett Bradbury, spend some big money on him, or else we make the trade for Ryan Kelly. And then, of course, the draft is an option. But my money would be on Jake Brendel coming back. Alrighty now, folks, we are going to move on to the defensive side of the ball. And where should we start? How about with the edge position? Now, the edge position is, of course, a critical position for the 49ers. We have, you could say, the best edge player in the NFL in Nick Bosa, the defensive player of the year. Nick Bosa, who's about to cash in and make crazy money, which is well-deserved. And then we also have Drake Jackson on the roster. We actually have no other edge players under contract for 2023, which is crazy to think about. So let's talk about in free agency, who are some options that we could look to bring in? Now, if you look to the roster last season, 
the Niners typically carried six edge players, five of them active on game day. So right now we have two under contract. I think it would be safe to say that we will draft at least one edge player somewhere in the draft. My guess is maybe with one of those third round picks or one of the fifth round picks, we did meet with a ton of different edge prospects at the combine and so on. So you'd have to guess that with one of those third round picks or fifth round picks, we will select an edge player to develop just like we are developing Drake Jackson. So that leaves, in my opinion, probably about three guys that you want to look at to bring in uh, for the regular season. Now, um, of course, there could be undrafted free agents. There could be a couple of lower end um, free agents veteran free agents that we could bring in as well but some of the bigger guys so in terms of guys who we could bring back who were with the team last season there's charles amenahu jordan willis Kerry hyder samson ebukam kimoko Ture. now i think the most intriguing one i think that i would like to bring back would be charles amenahu um you know he's been Statistically, according to PFF, like a, one of the really good pass rushers, stats don't necessarily back it up. But of course, just saying he had five or six sacks doesn't necessarily mean he's not a great pass rusher. Um, also pretty good on the edge, too, in terms of run uh, run defense as well is Charles Omenehu. Um, sounds like he's going to cash in. And he did have a tweet that had just come out kind of thanking the 49ers organization and Look, we're not in, I mean, he's a 49ers free agent, so the 49ers can have discussions with him regarding contracts. And to me, that kind of gives me the impression that the 49ers are saying, hey, we'd like to bring you back at this much, but if you want to test free agency, if you can get more money, you know, kind of go for it. And I think that's what's going to happen. And it will be a matter of, do the 49ers want to match what another team would be willing to offer Charles Amenahu. I'd love to have him back. I think that he may end up just getting a little bit too much money for the 49ers to match it. Now, when it comes to a guy, I love Jordan Willis. I think he's a great player. Um, he has special teams value, of course. We all remember what happened in Green Bay in the 2021 playoffs. Um, but I think he's a really solid rotational guy. Now, if you remember last year, if I'm not mistaken, he was out for the first six games. Um, I think he was suspended for... Uh, PEDs or something like that. Um, but I think if you give him the full offseason, really let him get into a rhythm throughout the year, he's a really solid rotational guy, really good size, um, solid in terms of run defense, and has shown in the past some ability to get after the pass or two. And I think, of course, he'd come at a very, very reasonable price. Then you have Kerry Hyder. Um, Hyder was a little bit of a disappointment in my eyes last season. Um, of course, he had a really good 2020 with the 49ers. He's getting a little bit up there in age, 32. 33 is Kerry Hyder. Um, I think should we suffer maybe if there is an injury and hopefully it doesn't happen, but if there is an injury maybe at you know during training camp or you know preseason or something, then I think we could bring back a guy like Kerry Hyder, but he wouldn't be on the top of my list. Ebu Kam, from what it sounds like, um, there was chatter at the combine that he could be making 10 plus million a year. And uh, I love I like Samson Ebukam. I think he's a good player. He was a bit of a disappointment as well this season. I thought he was going to take a big leap forward and didn't really see that. So if a team wants to pay him $10 million a year, that's not going to be the 49ers. Kamoko Ture, a bit like uh, Hyder. Um, I think he'd be like a depth signing maybe during training camp or something like that. But um, when you look at outside free agents, this is where it gets interesting. So if we want to make a splash, and I think that this could be a very realistic option because the 49ers defense, works best i mean look you have to get after the passer and that's an obvious thing to say but just to have a guy opposite of bosa where you can someone who can just give some consistent pressure now the first guy who comes to mind for me mentioned it in the video a couple of days ago leonard floyd of the la rams got released he's more used to rushing from a two-point stand so basically from his feet um not as common for him to rush with his hand in the dirt i don't think he would be a huge adjustment in the wide nine defense um, he's a guy who hasn't missed a game in years incredibly consistent with production the last three years he's had about 30 sacks or so uh, with the la rams um, really just need to get out of chicago it seemed like not a great fit for him but with the rams leonard floyd really good option and i think he would be a great fit beside a guy uh, opposite a guy like nick bosa and really just to allow if bosa gets double teamed or when bosa of course has to you know he has to sit for some plays or what have you that just to have a somewhat reliable pass rusher out there is hugely important another guy yannick Ngakwe, also very consistent in terms of 
just production sacks wise not a great run defender another option to bring back Arden Key of course we're familiar with him again not huge in the run defense aspect but I think bringing back Arden Key could be a really good option I thought you know, he really came on strong at the end of the 2021 year with the 49ers. And then hearing from Jaguar fans last season, it seemed like he kind of had a slow start, but then really got it going in Jacksonville, and they really liked him. So I think what could be an option is maybe you bring back an Omenahu for reasonable money and Arden Key, and that could be a good way to go for the 49ers, but we'll see. A couple of other guys to mention, Ogbenia Okoronkwo. He was with the Rams last season, spent it with the Houston Texans, someone who really has some nice pass, uh, pass rush moves, still very young, so has a lot of promise. Now, that could also mean that could command quite a bit more money, but a really intriguing prospect. I'd love to see what a coach like Chris Kacerik, Steve Wilkes, could do with a guy like Okoronkwo. And then the last one, which would be interesting here for a relatively relatively high-priced signing, Jadavian Clowney. Now, Jadavian Clowney, I think he's been definitely not a bust by any means. He's still in the NFL years and years after he's been drafted. Probably didn't live up to that number one overall pick status, um, but I think he's been really, really solid throughout his career. And to me, maybe it was just because his rookie year he got hurt and missed maybe like 10, 12 games that I kind of just was like, oh, Jadavian Clowney, he gets hurt a lot. But really, he's been pretty consistent in terms of just being able to play games. In 2021, I think he only played eight games. But outside of that, he's played in double-digit games for most of his career, if not all of it. Um, so I think he's been like relatively productive, too. Just in 2021, he uh, had nine sacks playing opposite Miles Garrett. Really, I mean, like he's got so many great tools. And it would be interesting to see him, again, playing opposite a guy like Bosa, you know, with guys like Eric Armstead in the middle, and then getting that great coaching from Chris Kacerik in a scheme that I think would really fit what Clowney does. Plus, Clowney has that great size, reasonable in the run defensive game, would probably cost a reasonable amount, you know, from that list that I just mentioned. I think maybe Leonard Floyd would probably be, again, a decent sized contract, would be super productive. But I would like Arden Key with a combo of Charles Amenahu and Jordan Willis. Basically bringing back a lot of the guys from the 2021 defense. Then you look at some players here. These are the guys who are veterans in terms of, you know, probably in the last year or two of their career. And maybe they want to come to San Francisco for a shot to win a Super Bowl and just basically be like a rotational pass rusher. Justin Houston, I think, would be a really good option. Then you have Carlos Dunlap, who just won another Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, Melvin Ingram has had pretty productive year last season. And then Jason Pierre-Paul, too. Um, so I think those could be some options as well, just for depth. And just they have that veterancy. They kind of have a plan to attack. You don't you know with regards to coaching. You can kind of just let them be. And they could also be really good mentors to guys like Drake Jackson and whatever rookies we bring in. But Edge, this is a critical one. And I've spent the most time on this position. To me, it's so critical that we address this position as well as defensive tackle. So, you know, brace yourselves for that because that's going to be a long segment of this video. But... Last season, if it wasn't Bosa getting pressure, it kind of seemed like nobody was. And that's something that we really have to fix because that's going to allow guys like Mooney Ward and Lenore and Hufanga and the safeties, everyone to make plays, linebackers too. So, um, But there you have it for Edge. What I will say is, yeah, we think we're probably going to bring in, uh, we'll draft uh, an Edge, probably one, maybe two Edge players. If I had to make a guess here, um, I would say maybe we bring back, we bring in Omenahu. Bring back Omenahu, bring back Jordan Willis. You could sign Arden Key, maybe assign a guy like Justin Houston. You draft someone, and bam, you have like a really good, really deep, talented edge group to get after opposing quarterbacks. Alrighty, up next, we got the interior of the defensive line, defensive tackle positions. Now, of course, let's go through some of the players who are already under contract for next year, and then we're going to talk about the free agents who I think could be brought in for depth and or improvements. So let's start off with Eric Armstead. Really like Eric Armstead. Um, it was a shame that he missed so much time last year. I think we really missed his presence in that middle portion of the year where we really did struggle quite a bit against some teams that I thought we would have been able to handle uh, mostly thinking of the Atlanta Falcons game um, of course we also have Javon Kinlaw um, can't really rely on Kinlaw at all to stay healthy even when he's been on the field towards the end of last year he was not good so you know Kinlaw I think his roster spot is pretty much assured 
for the 2023 season, but we're definitely, we didn't pick up his fifth year option, wisely so. Um, and you just can't count on him to be out there. So depth is necessary. Uh, Kalia Davis missed his entire rookie year with an injury, seemed to be kind of getting back on the track to playing at the end of last year, but the 49ers didn't want to basically mess with the defensive line that they'd already had for the majority of the year. But I think he's an intriguing prospect. And then Kevin Givens, who I believe is a restricted free agent, I think we'll definitely bring him back. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Um, great fit for what we do here in San Francisco. So let's talk a little bit about players who I think we could potentially re-sign who are free agents who played with us last year. Now, the first guy, Hassan Ridgeway, I'm actually playing pretty decent football until he got hurt about halfway through the year. Um, I think if he can come back on another cheap one-year deal, I wouldn't be terribly opposed to it, depending on what the strategy is for the 49ers in terms of addressing defensive tackle in the draft. I think Hassan Ridgeway is someone who I'd like to bring back if we're thinking of with one of those third round picks saying we're going to get a defensive tackle right there. Uh, I think really bringing back some depth would be good. A uh, good option. Another guy to think about too and I thought he actually did a pretty solid job was T.Y. McGill. Hit a was it one or two bad penalties in the NFC Championship game. However, I think for a guy who was essentially brought in midway through the season, give him a full offseason with the team, with this talent, with this coaching, and I think he'd maybe be a, you know slightly better, um, but just a solid depth piece, which, again, we saw it last year. We lost Kinlaw in injury, to be expected. We lost Armstead. Ridgeway went out. Defensive tackle, you have to have serious depth because those guys in the trenches, their legs get caught up under one another, um, so you have to have depth. So I think T.Y. McGill could be a very good option on a cheap one-year deal. Now, if the 49ers say, look, Javon Kinlaw, been you could say a relative bust so far with the 49ers we need and we want to have the best defensive line in football if they really want to go i think all in not javon kinlaw but javon hargrave could be the guy to bring in now a lot of teams are going to be after his services especially since deron Payne got franchise tagged by the washington commanders i think you know hargrave is the best defensive tackle available in free agency and there are a lot of teams with a lot more money to spend than the 49ers however what the 49ers do have on our side with regards to a guy like Javon Hargrave is that well he's just been to a Super Bowl and I think he probably likes being on a team that's good and competing you know year in and year out and I think he'd look at San Francisco and say hey Three of the last four years, this team has been in the NFC Championship game. And one of those years, they got to the Super Bowl. They're really, really close. Could Hargrave be the missing piece for this defense, especially considering how unreliable Kinlaw has been? Hargrave put up big stats, great against the run, all around really good defensive tackle, and really consistent as well, staying healthy. That could be a huge get for the 49ers. Of course, it would mean investing a lot of money in the defensive line when you look at the massive contract that Nick Bosa is going to get. You look at the big money that we're already paying Eric Armstead. Then you add in another guy like Hargrave. And Hargrave is 30, 31. Mm. Armstead getting a little bit older too. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see if the Niners would go kind of like all in on a move like Javon Hargrave. But he would be a fantastic addition to the team. Now, if the Niners want to go, and I think this is the more likely route of maybe a little bit more affordable yet still effective, would be the first guy is Shai Tuttle, mentioned in my recent video. I think he's a really solid option, solid against the run, has some moves, can take on double teams, really just a guy who can allow Armstead, Bosa, and whatever other edge players out there to really get those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Matt Ioannidis with the Panthers, last couple of years with you know Steve Wilkes in Carolina, that could be an intriguing thing. Steve Wilkes might push to bring in a guy like Matt Ioannidis, also has had some good years in the past. And just a solid rotational guy, maybe plays 50% of the snaps on the D-line. Last guy, Sheldon Rankins, former first-round pick with the Saints. has been with the Jets the last few years in that Robert Sala defense, which, of course, similar to what we run here in San Francisco. And he's put up respectable numbers, and he's been consistently healthy. So these are all really good options here. To me, I think you, know, you look at we're probably going to carry five, six guys in terms of defensive tackle through the season. Kinlaw, you kind of bank on him just being out. So you have Armstead, Kalia Davis, an unknown. Givens, I like him, but he's not necessarily a starter, just a good rotation guy. So I wouldn't be surprised if we bring back, let's say, Hassan Ridgeway, 
then we bring in one of the four other guys. So one of Hargrave, Tuttle, Ionitis, or Rankins, and then you have the rookie too, which I think would be a very solid defensive tackle group for the 49ers. But uh, yeah, this should be an interesting one, and the Niners do have to address this position simply because Kinlaw has not lived up to his draft, uh, draft uh, status. Alrighty, let's quickly go through the linebacking group. And of course, we already have some fantastic players at linebacker for the 49ers. All pro Fred, amazing player, not really much to say about him except arguably the best linebacker in the NFL. Then, of course, you have Dre Greenlaw. Love the way he plays. Sometimes a little bit overly aggressive, but still, you gotta love the way Dre Greenlaw plays the game. And then we have Oren Burks, great special teams player, and honestly looked pretty good in limited snaps defensively. I think he's someone who can come in and be the number three linebacker. Now, if we're looking towards free agency, what could the 49ers do to add a little bit of depth there? So, I think maybe bringing back a guy like Demetrius Flanagan Foles. I believe he's a restricted free agent. That could be a really solid uh, idea. I think he looked pretty solid in limited snaps. Then I think the most intriguing guy who could bring back, and I say bring back is he hasn't been with the Niners for a number of years. You probably know who I'm going to say right now. And that's going to be Quan Alexander. Great, great, great locker room guy. The Hot Boys, if you remember back in 2019, uh, very familiar with Fred Warner, very familiar with Dre Greenlaw, the defense that we like to run here. And he's been healthy, much more healthy with the last couple of seasons, you know, with the Jets, with the Saints, than he was with the 49ers in 2019. Big fan of Quan Alexander. Bummer, it didn't work out for him here in San Francisco, but I do think a potential reunion is on the cards. Now, one of the guys who I didn't really mention here was Aziz Alshire. I think there's basically zero chance he comes back. I think, number one, he wants a chance to start somewhere, and I think he is good enough, absolutely good enough to start in the NFL. And number two, I think he's going to want a relatively decent-sized contract. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up re reuniting with... Um, with uh, D'Amico Ryans in Houston, possibly Robert Sala with the Jets, but I think he will be a starter in the NFL. Quickly, with regards to the draft, I think a guy like Cam Jones and maybe the fifth round would be a great pickup for the San Francisco 49ers. Another just fantastic locker room guy. Could be a special teams player early on and then move into a role on the defense. But uh, yeah, there you have it for linebacker. Not a whole lot to discuss here because we're probably going to carry maybe four or five linebackers. Three of them are already positions are locked up. Quan Alexander could be an interesting guy to bring back, though, and he could be had at a reasonable price. Let's now talk about the cornerback position and let's kick it off with the players that we have under contract. We're going to start off, of course, with Mooney Ward. What a great pickup he was last offseason. He's under contract for two more years. Diamador Lenore, what a great story. Of course, unfortunately, Emmanuel Mosley got hurt. Lenore came in and ultimately did a great job filling in, especially down the stretch in the playoffs, was arguably as good, if not better, than Mooney Ward. Then you look at guys like Ambry Thomas, Sammy Womack, Quantrez Knight is an undrafted free agent that some people are quite high on too. So you look there, you see about four guys who are probably going to make the roster next year. So what can the 49ers do with regards to either improving or just getting depth in free agency? The first guy to me that we have to talk about is Emmanuel Mosley. What's going to happen with Emmanuel Mosley? He was having a great, great year, maybe his best year as an NFL player in 2022. Then he had that awful ACL tear against the Carolina Panthers. The defense was just so lights out with him out there. Now, Emmanuel Mosley, not the youngest guy. He's going to be coming back from an ACL tear. So the question is, I think, what are teams going to be willing to offer him you know, on the free agent market. Now, I think, of course, the Houston Texans, that could be a very intriguing option for Emmanuel Mosley. Reunites with D'Amico Ryans over there. They have Derek Stingley Jr. Then you have Emmanuel Mosley. That could be a really solid starting duo, a cornerback for the Houston Texans moving forward. The issue, though, is that Emmanuel Mosley is coming off an ACL tear. It happened relatively early in the year, but will he be ready to go for 2023? With the 49ers, you might be able to get him back on a one-year deal for a reasonable amount of money, and then maybe next year, Mosley could test the free agent market if he can stay healthy and if he can put up another very productive year playing opposite of a guy like Charvarius Ward. What would also hugely benefit the 49ers there is if you do have Emmanuel Mosley back, 
and let's say if he's able to maybe start maybe not week one but even if he can start week four week five or what have you then you have Mosley and Mooney Ward on the outside, Lenore and Womack on the inside. So you're very, you're still quite young at quarterback, but you have a lot of talent right there, and you're pretty deep too because you have a guy like uh, Ambry Thomas waiting in the wings who finished 2021 strong. We're not really sure what happened to him last year, maybe some injuries and whatnot, but um, I think that would put the 49ers in a great position if we can do a one-year deal. With Emmanuel Mosley, though, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes another route and takes maybe the bigger money for the longer contract and just kind of secures his money right now because even if he does come back on a one-year deal with San Francisco, he'll play in a great defense, which he'll look pretty darn good. But if he gets hurt again, then he's missed out on a potential free agent basically cashing in. So that remains to be seen. Should we not decide to bring back Mosley or if he decides he really just wants to sign somewhere else, what are some other options the 49ers have? Well, to me, someone who I mentioned in a recent video was Bryce Callahan. I think he could be brought in to compete at the nickel spot with Sammy Womack. That leaves Lenore and Mooney Ward on the outside. Callahan, a veteran. You know, he's played in some big games, played in playoff games, and he's just a solid veteran guy to have out there, not going to make the big mistake. And then we have a couple of intriguing guys that we could look to bring in who I think would be a little bit farther, maybe down the depth chart. But the first guy I want to talk about is Amani Uruwarie uh, from the Detroit Lions. Now, Uruwarie in 2021 got beat quite a lot. However, he was a playmaker with six interceptions. I think coming to a much better defense in San Francisco could really allow him to flourish. He's still pretty young. He's only been in the league for four years. Had a rough 2022, no doubt about it but he'd be coming to a much better defense here in San Francisco, and that could maybe just a change of scenery. Detroit, I think, are turning things around for sure, but their defense was still in the bottom of the NFL last year, so that part of their game they need to fix. But Uruwari, I think in a new situation, could really explode onto the scene and could really just develop into a consistent guy. The last guy that we're going to talk about here, a cornerback, free agency-wise, is Greedy Williams. Now, he's a guy who was drafted by Cleveland, I think in the second, maybe third round, out of LSU. Steve Wilkes was actually in Cleveland when he was drafted, so there's a little bit of familiarity with our new defensive coordinator. And I think Greedy Williams could be an interesting guy. You know, he's someone who didn't really get to play much last year. They have Denzel Ward. They had one of my draft crushes from last year, Martin Emerson. So he just wasn't really going to get the snaps. I think he could come here, you know, comes to a good situation in San Francisco, reunites with a guy like Steve Wilkes, who I'm sure had some kind of say in terms of drafting Greedy Williams. I'm sure he gave his thoughts on him. And uh, that could be a reasonable fit for this defense to even help some of the guys out to get acclimated to a Steve Wilkes defense. Also, don't be surprised. Like the Niners, I think, will address cornerback somewhere. Um, that remains to be seen, of course. Could, I could see them maybe even trading up for a really good prospect, maybe a Julius Brents from Kansas State. Maybe they hang back a little bit, wait for later in the third round. Maybe the fifth round of Riley Moss out of Iowa. We'll see what happens. But I think the 49ers have some decent options here at cornerback. Plus, you have Lenore, you have Mooney Ward, so you have, if you want to go, and I would feel comfortable with those guys being the starters at cornerback. And I think Sammy Womack is a guy who's primed to take a big leap in 2023. Let's now move on to the safety position. And of course, we have all pro Talanoa Hufanga and we have George Odom under contract for next year. Interesting, we have some interesting options in terms of guys who we could bring back. Tarverius Moore, I think it's unlikely. He seemed like a pretty good fit back in like 2019. He had that really bad injury and he just hasn't looked the same since. So I think he will be gone. Maybe he goes to Houston or Miami or the Jets where there's some familiarity with the coaching staffs there. But to me, the number one guy, of course, that we have to bring back, in my opinion, is Tashawn Gibson Sr., what a find last year. I thought he was a great pickup at the time, and he proved himself five interceptions, you know, just a, his best season in the NFL at that age. Now, it sounds like from what everything he said, he wants to play one more year. I think that works out really well for the 49ers because you're going to see, you know, big contracts are really going to take effect in 2024. So to Sean Gibson, you could probably give him a reasonable contract. He has that familiarity with Hufanga and the defense and the coaching and the situation mm. seems like a perfect fit. I don't see, I think that's the most likely thing that happens. Now, the wild card in all of this to me is Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward, 
initially was basically sounding like, I'm done, I'm not coming back to San Francisco, you're not going to see me here, to recently kind of being open to being like, hey, the Niners have maybe have some money after they, some restructures. He's like saying he could potentially be open to coming back at the nickel position. So that's an intriguing prospect too. If Jimmy Ward is open to coming back for a reasonable amount, I would ap- I would happily take him back. His versatility, you know, I just love how he's like a tone setter on defense. So that's something intriguing. However, let's just say free agency opens and a team throws money at Jimmy Ward, which is very possible. There's a lot of teams, a lot of money, maybe the Bears, for example. Where could the 49ers go outside of bringing guys back? So you have Juan Thornhill from the Kansas City Chiefs, super athletic, really rangy type guy. Steve Wilkes can sometimes, you know, institute more single high safety. Juan Thornhill just has that athleticism to play that. Not going to be a Pro Bowl type, you know, safety, but I think with an improved pass rush in San Francisco, I think could do a really solid job there. The other guy, Donovan Wilson with the Dallas Cowboys. Again, a versatile defensive back, so you love that. That could be an option. And a more veteran guy could be like an Adrian Amos, you know, with the Chicago Bears, with the Green Bay Packers. You know, I think that he's a guy who's been around, could be, albeit more expensive and maybe on a two or three year deal, but could actually end up being a similar pickup to to Deshaun Gibson was for us last year. Ultimately, I think we bring back Deshaun Gibson Sr. And I think we draft a safety and a safety is a position where I absolutely would not be surprised at all. If we trade up for a guy like uh, Brown out of Illinois, Sidney Brown out of Illinois, that could be a fantastic pickup. I think he plays the game pretty similar to a guy like Tashawn Gibson, to a guy like Jimmy Ward. So that could be a great idea. Maybe if we hang back in the third round, a guy like Jay Ward out of LSU. I'm a big fan of his as well. So there's a lot of options, and I think the 49ers will be good at the safety position. Again, basically, don't bet on it, but... I would say count on Tashawn Gibson coming back and us drafting a guy and the future at safety will be very bright for the San Francisco 49ers. Last but uh, not least, let's very quickly touch on the kicker position. Robbie Gold, should we bring him back? I think that there's a lot of benefits to bringing back a guy like Robbie Gold. We have no one under contract, of course, at kicker, but uh, Robbie Gold, one, why do I like him? Well, in the playoffs, he has not missed a field goal. So that's the big thing. This team, the 49ers, should absolutely be competing in the playoffs, competing for a Super Bowl. So you want to have that veteran guy who's been there, done that. Now, if Robbie Gold is looking for five or six million dollars a year, then I'm going to have to say a hard pass just because I think that there are other options out there that could be had for a reasonable contract that could perform maybe just as well, maybe, albeit maybe not necessarily as reliable in the playoffs, but just a good kicker and maybe can even be better in some instances. So first guy, Eddie Panera with the Carolina Panthers, really good kicking numbers and definitely has more distance than a guy like Robbie Gold. So on kickoffs, he can kick the ball through the back of the end zone. We don't have to worry about any crazy, you know, returns that really just screw us over. Plus, you know, when it comes to like a 53 to 55 plus yard field goals, we can actually attempt those, you know, Robbie Gold, Beyond 52, 53, Shanahan really didn't like having to go to Robbie Gold unless he had to in those situations. Another guy is Matt Gay from the LA Rams. LA Rams are having a fire sale. They're getting rid of everybody. I don't think they're going to spend big money on a kicker, but who knows. Um, But he's really been productive. He's been a Pro Bowl kicker as well. That's an interesting option. The other option too, Greg Joseph. Not as big a fan of him. Um, He's just really not reliable with the, the kick after the scoring touchdown. Extra points. He's missed six last season, so that's no good. And then, of course, you have the option, not free agency, but in the draft. Those can always be really tricky, super hit or miss in terms of drafting kickers. You see a guy like Roberto Aguayo, who's the second round pick, who ends up out of the league in a year or two. Then you have seventh round you know, rookies who do pretty well, like the guy from uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, McPherson. But overall, to me, I think the 49ers will probably go more for a veteran guy, a guy who's been in big situations. To me, Matt Gay is probably the guy. He's kicked in the Super Bowl, big playoff games. My money's on Matt Gay if we don't bring back Robbie Gold. Well, there you have it, guys. That is my free agency bonanza video podcast, whatever you'd like to call it. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Of course, 
Maybe if you're on your commute to work or whatever you're doing, listen to this. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed my insights on the 49ers. Of course, the breakdown, looking at the team and free agents that we could bring in. I really do want to hear your thoughts about who you guys think we should bring in to not only help improve the team, but just to even round out the roster. And then, of course, we're going to have a whole bunch of draft talk. But remember, tomorrow, March 13th, is the legal tampering period, and that's where nine times out of ten when something gets reported as a done deal it's a done deal um, so that's going to be really exciting the football season is basically starting up again we're going to be ramping up doing a whole bunch of videos my reactions of course to any signings the 49ers make any trades the 49ers make or any big crazy nfl news so that's going to be awesome so i hope you'll stick around for that but i just want to say a huge thank you if you enjoyed this content then uh, do consider liking the video subscribing to the channel really really helps out and stay tuned for future videos before i head out though there's going to be two things that i'm going to say the butt counts i'm going to catch you guys on the flip side